Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We have a variety of bits for you today. Where are all the CIG updates? They're back at work, aren't they? We take a quick look at the This Week in Star Citizen and some dev responses on Gen 12 renderer, melee weapons, face customization, and why Reddit posts shouldn't replace the issue council. We are currently alone in the dark at the moment. So Cloud Imperium Games' weekly shows and roadmap updates are still on hiatus currently. And we don't know when the monthly report is coming out yet either. Hopefully, that will all start back up next week. I was expecting some of it to be this week, but there's very little this week, unfortunately. Star Citizen Alpha 3.18 is getting a load of its bugs beaten out of it in Wave 1 PTU at the moment. I think we could see the open PTU by the end of the week, though. Live is expected by the end of the month. There was a This Week in Star Citizen post from CIG, though. Let's have a quick read of this. We hope that you all enjoyed the holiday season, and we'd like to begin by expressing our sincerest gratitude to everyone for a fantastic ride last year. 2022 was another record-breaking year of growth for Star Citizen, and we couldn't have done it without you. For a comprehensive look at what we achieved together, look at the letter from the chairman, from Chris Roberts himself. So that's a, a fantastic sort of set of information about what Cloud Imperium have got planned for this year. Their sort of plans on potentially getting 4.0 out the door by the end of the year, all the sort of um, milestones they hit in the um, 2022. Um, if you would like to see a breakdown of that, I've got a video on that, which I will link down below. We'd also like to thank the participants of the Holiday Greeting Card Contest and the Deck the Hall Screenshot Contest that helped wrap up last year in a spectacular manner. If you haven't already, you can feast your eyes on these fantastic festive submissions on Spectrum. Now we're gearing up to what will be Star Citizen's biggest year to date, and we're excited to continue on this journey with you in 2023. As our teams return to the studios with renewed vigor from the break, everyone is working hard to finish and polish up Alpha 3.18 to launch the highly anticipated update on our live servers for all to enjoy. A new year also brings about new perspectives and direction. To that effect, starting in January, the narrative team will be pivoting focus to producing in-game content for Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Last but not least, get ready for incredible displays of skill and thrills in the filthiest annual race in the verse. In just under two weeks on Saturday the 21st of January, participants of the Daymar Rally 2953 will rev their engines and battle out in the biggest community-driven racing event of the year. This is all live streamed and there's commentators from Atmo Esports sort of um, going through it. I love the Daymar Rally. It is a great community event done every year. Bugs and all make that race so it, it's quite funny you sometimes have participants finishing the race on foot it is a shame that 3.18 is unlikely unlikely to be live for the day rally because the idea of persistent entity streaming in the future would allow players to potentially leave ships and vehicles and stuff like that in very select places potentially a while before the race starts i suppose they'd have to know what surf it was going to be on and you don't have shard affinity at the moment but the future of the Daymar Rally could be very wacky races. I really like that. So yeah, we're waiting for Cloud Imperium to start up their updates again regularly. I was hoping it would be this week, but it looks like some of that will start next week. Um, hopefully all of it. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. We have a few dev responses though. Gen 12 renderer and RAM requirements is a thread that I saw. Is there any chance at the new Gen 12 renderer or Vulkan could lead to reduced RAM requirements? I'm playing on Shadow Cloud streaming PC and have no option of upgrading RAM. CIG's Ali Brown responded to this. There won't be any major changes to RAM or VRAM usage with Gen 12. The renderer doesn't really use very much RAM or CPU, especially compared to systems like Physics. It uses a lot more VRAM, GPU, but we've been able to maintain support for 3 gig GPUs so far, though 4 gig is strongly recommended. Most of this is used for mesh and textures, and we recently started work on updating our streaming logic for these, and as part of this intend to expose more control to the player in the options menu to balance the memory usage versus image and mesh quality. CIG's Ali Brown continued, there are still a number of improvements we will be making in 3.18, and that should be apparent in the live build as well. Another thread. Can we get more melee weapons, please, CIG? CIG's Chris Wayne Schmidt replied to this. I'd love to see more melee weapons like swords or others. However, you should also keep in mind that each type of weapon requires new animations for the characters. That's an interesting one because we are expecting more melee weapons um, from advocacy tools like stun baton -y type things to, well, the vandal weapons. And uh, I think we can expect a, a variety of melee weapons to be in the game eventually, but don't expect loads and loads and don't expect them anytime soon. Reddit versus the Issue Council was another thread I saw. 
um, with the OP saying, the original poster, I totally understand why the issue council is untrustworthy to some people. Why use this method, wait for 10 people and still watch it do nothing when you can just post on Reddit? This is because, one of the main things, that you don't really get developer feedback immediately from the issue council. What you do get feedback from is a Spectrum post or quite readily on Reddit, a Reddit post some devs will turn up and actually give you feedback on and reply to you. So CIG's Chris Wayne Schmidt again replied, the issue council is probably one of the most underrated tools you as players can access to support Star Citizen development. However, it is tremendously helpful for our devs in finding, tracking, categorizing and solving bugs. It is directly linked to other tools that creates Jira's enabling us to internally see the progress in solving these issues. A developer can also easily track their work and share it with other developers. Please use the issue council as often as possible as not only does it save us a tremendous amount of of time but it also minimizes the risk of things slipping through the cracks sending our devs to reddit to search for bug reports is not a time-saving alternative nor does it help with streamlining the bug fixing process cig winter continued as wayne cig says I wouldn't rely on Reddit for getting bugs resolved. Even when we find issues on Reddit or Twitch or Discord channels, etc., we still need an existing IC or Jira to resolve the issue against. What doesn't get seen behind the scenes is usually when an issue like this is discovered on another platform or even Spectrum, the devs usually reach out to our live QA guys to see if they have a ticket that they can use. I know it can seem like IC, the issue council, can be futile at times, but it's a massive part of our day-to-day -day internally. We have a large and relatively new team who are now fully committed to ingesting issue council reports, reinforcing them and getting them in front of the right people, as well as guys who are dedicated to improving the issue council pipeline. So things will continue to improve in that regard. I'd certainly not worry about devs being proactive in tackling things as they see them in the wild, though. It always comes from a place of wanting the game to be better. I think, personally actually, that the issue council, the actual um, issues, could really benefit from a sort of dev reply section below. Um, just saying, um, so that devs can reply on the issue council if they want. I think a lot of players really like that sort of interaction and immediate feedback um, that they get with Reddit and Spectrum posts. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's not, obviously it's not all the time, and it's only when the devs um, are able to, but maybe then people would expect it. It's a tricky one, but obviously use the issue council. That's the way that bugs get fixed the quickest and has the most tangible effect on Star Citizen and bug fixing. What happened to the DNA face tech code was another thread that I saw. Um, when the DNA face tech was introduced, there was talk about a hex code that you could copy paste into an external document to save the shape of your head, i.e. selecting your ancestors and what parts of them you wanted to use. Such a hex code is most useful now, when we are still in alpha and have to recreate our heads quite often. Without it, we can't really reproduce our heads consistently unless we select a very simple and manually repeatable shape. So there is little room for fine tuning and getting things just so. Also, the random head function can't be used as a starting point. So is the hex code function still in the works? CIG Sylvan replied to this, we've been refactoring major parts of the DNA system at the moment to make it more future-proof and extendable so anyone who's familiar with the DNA system is quite busy. Once that's done, I hope that it won't take too long until we see this in game. That's really good to hear. I do want um, character creation to almost be saved to the account at this stage. But yes, if you can sort of have a, have a hex code that you put in that just saves your character face and your character so that anytime there's a reset, bam, you can just put him straight back in. That would be absolutely awesome. Boom! That's it for your dev response and Star Citizen updates today. But what do you think? Are you excited to have more customization of faces and actually be able to save them from um, each sort of uh, patch wipe? Hopefully, we'll get facial hair and more hairstyles soon as well. What about melee weapons? Do you want more melee weapons in the game? Issue Council. Do you use the Issue Council regularly? Is it something that you sort of forget to use? You go, well, actually, other people will do the sort of bug fixing and, and um, identify bugs. Oh, this is always going to be a commonly um, known problem, so there's no point. Do you prefer to use Reddit or Spectrum to report and talk about bugs? The Gen 12 renderer, do you think that's going to give you some more sort of frames? Are you someone that CPU bottlenecks when you play Star Citizen? You're like, actually, the Gen 12 renderer stuff's going to be awesome. Or are you keenly awaiting Vulcan that should be coming later this year? Have you been playing in Star Citizen now for Wave 1 
or are you waiting for the open peer to you or even the live build? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. It's a new year, time for resolutions, a brighter future. I'll make myself better each day. Or I could just stay at home and play computer games. But what if someone steals my house or bank while I'm otherwise preoccupied on the internet? NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. It's probably the best VPN deal of 2023 already. Not only does it provide security, anonymity, and accessibility on the interwebs, but I haven't heard of anyone with NordVPN having their house stolen. Thanks, NordVPN. Now no one will know what type of degenerate anime I watch. Get NordVPN, you filthy animal. You deserve it. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For January, we are giving away an Argo Raft, the reinforced advanced freight transport ship a dedicated cargo hauler that should see some additional gameplay in 2023. This also comes with a Star Citizen game package and lifetime insurance. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, then please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button under my videos. You can even become a Patreon. There's links below to that. But liking, subscribing, commenting goes a huge way to help the channel grow. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the verse.